Greetings, everybody. We've gathered around the table again today, and we're going to be going on a little uh, safari, I guess, today. But first, our pocket dumps. And because he wasn't here last week, Paul! All right. And uh, <laughs> for reasons that I'm not going to explain right now, this is relevant to this week's uh, video. It's new to you. It's a new it's to you. brand new to me. Yep. Vitoku um, Dragon Pie. Yeah. Laminated. I've Fancy. wanted a dragonfly forever. And we've talked in the past about the fact that I wanted the uh, the Blue Steel Delica, yeah. and I missed that opportunity. So this kind of fulfills that, as far as I'm concerned. It's a nice I idea. love the dragonflies. Yep. They're, They're classic. Cute. They're classic. Yeah. It's super cute. I think yeah. you're the first person to own a dragonfly in this group, which is actually pretty surprising. Yeah. No one but... Nigel's love of weirdly small knives. Who <laughs> would have thought he would have had one by now? Yeah, <laughs> the right dragonfly hasn't come my way yet. And that's exactly yeah. it. I, I needed something that wasn't just plain BG Tech. Yeah. And that was the only qualifier that I had for this. Yep. Fair enough. That is fair. Well, I'm also carrying a spider coat today, but this one's an oldie. The Phoenix. Such a weird one. Such a weird knife. <laughs> it's weird, but I love it. <laughs> My little oddball. Yep. Yeah. Should mention the fact that you uh, anodized that. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's all uh, greased up with my finger oils. It's normally a royal purple. It's not anodized. That's just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tina the titanium. It's like, didn't think it was possible. Well, People have like, you met Joe? Yeah. <laughs> Surprised that the white my card is still white. Yeah. Be careful when you shake hands. Your hands will melt. <laughs> You'll lose some fingers. Be careful. And I'm just being classy and simple for lazy Sunday carry. Mm. My little root slip joint there. Nice. That's a nice one. That's yep. a good Fantastic Sunday carry. Fantastic little, for sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. The same knife in black, and I love that thing. Definitely top of my list for little budget folders that I've got. That's a great little guy. You're still liking the uh, 20, uh, 12C27? Yep. Yeah. 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 It's a nice deal. Really like 12C27. Yeah, it's a mm -hmm. lot. And I'm throwing a wrench in the works. You guys don't know I have this, but new to me is the Steel Wheel Modus. Ah, nice. Ah, very nice. So D2 Tool Steel, a uh, little blue uh, aluminum backspace. Like little blue. <laughs> it's a little blue. It's a little splash of blue. Uh, it was given to me as a gift uh, Sweet. from a guy for helping him out move some knives and stuff. So, uh, very cool. Yeah, it was just given to me as a thank you. So nice. it's going to turn into probably like a, a travel workhorse. Knife. A good knife for that. Yeah, try to try to like flippers, even though <laughs> I might delete it. I might spike <laughs> hole and get a finger choil. You are <laughs> brutal. <laughs> but How yeah. soon I have the cut that? jack, and I like the aluminum backspacer on that. Like I like the little splash of color. Yeah, and then no finger choil. Your cut jack has a finger choil. That's yeah. a big difference. Other than the blade shape, is that the modus doesn't actually come with the finger choil. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, yeah. Thought I'd mix it up and surprise you guys with that one. So yeah. Cool. So for this week's episode, we're we have a offering from Spiderco. We're doubling up on the Spider Coast. Yep. And like I mentioned, it's a little bit of a safari because we're checking out the Rhino. Yay! Rhino. So at a overall length of five point nine five inches. It would take 11 of these little guys to equal the height of Muggsy Bogues, who was the shortest basketball player ever. Thank you for telling me who that <laughs> was. Sorry, Muggsy, I had no idea who you were. Really? <laughs> Terrible. I can't believe. Charlotte Hornets. It was a beautiful thing. Yeah, man. Dude, my Tiniest point guard in the world. My sports knowledge, man. I got nothing. Yeah. So... All it takes to be as good as Muggsy is owning eleven of these, apparently. And I don't think and you said that. You can be in the NBA. That's <laughs> as long as you can balance them. Yeah, so that sounds like a Dennis quote right there. <laughs> Probably. At two point five ounces, it would take nineteen of these to equal the average weight of a human brain. Meaty. Very. I was just glad we didn't have a sack of something that we had to talk about again. It was three weeks in a row, for Christ's sake. <laughs> like, it's... Lots of sacks. Yep. I'm just happy that I have one whole brain as opposed to uh, multiple of these knives. I don't know if multiple of them would actually fit in, a, or like 19 of them would actually fit in a cranium. Probably have to melt them down or something. Yeah. Like, crush up the scales. It sounds like a whole thing. <laughs> Laborous thing. Snorting rhinos. 
don't snort, Ryan. Right? There's a whole industry behind that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not legal. <laughs> don't do what did it. I say about PETA? Like, in the comments. <laughs> in the comments. It's... We're not advocating for animal abuse. <laughs> <laughs> or for hunting rhinos for sniffing their horns. <laughs> We were doing so well before this started. <laughs> no talk of dash hounds or kangaroos. Sox went to Malton. Muxy Bogues, he's cool. We yeah. got down on him, and then bam. We got. <laughs> it was going to come up at one point tonight. Snorting rhino dust. Have you met us? <laughs> Hi, welcome to the Pokey Factor. For the record, I don't even know what that does. <laughs> is it an upper? Is it a downer? Is it an oh, it's an upper of some sort, I think. I don't Supposedly? think it's actually anything. <laughs> no, no. You might as well be snorting fingernails. Like, yep. Uh, That's what it's made of. Yeah, yeah it's the same material, man. Yeah. I don't like that at all. No. <laughs> no. Just snort some fingernails. This ties Don't in. snort it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna make a crash. You beat me to it. <laughs> You'll hurt yourself. It will be a bad day. Indeed. But yeah. Very cute little guy here. It, okay, so there's a little bit of history to the development of this knife. Uh, initially, it was supposed to be made in Taipei. It was supposed to be made with uh, solid G10 handles, BD1 steel. They found that for whatever reason, it wasn't quite up to par with the quality they wanted. So off to Taichung they go and right. doing the Taichung thing what with the laminated carbon fiber G10 mm -hmm. and the uh, CTS XHP. Kind of evolved a little bit before it uh, was released. So... Mm -hmm. They did actually make. Um, they had prototypes, right? Uh, no, they had like a full out first line ready to come off the line in Taipei, and they scrapped the whole thing for whatever reason. I'm not wow. sure the forum saw them, but interesting. Yeah, um, I didn't know that. there is a couple. I think it's in last year's um, catalog. No, shot show with Eric. Oh where he's talking about this one, and he does say in a comment somewhere along the way that this guy here was, like, we took a look at him and we just weren't happy, so we scrapped the whole thing and took it to the Tai Chung factory. I Fair think enough. it's a good idea if they were that bad. Don't even, like... And I know yeah. it's a good decision to not put it out to the market. And I don't <laughs> know how many run... Like, I know that there was some that had come off the line enough that they took a look at them from the Taipei factory. There <laughs> was some that were actually produced, and they said, no, we don't like <laughs> it. We're going back to the drawing board. You can see a lot of companies so. making the decision to push them out in that situation because they've already put that much money into the development. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? For them to say, no, nah, we're going to move them is kind of impressive. Indeed. I personally think it's a marketing strategy on... Um, Spyderco's fair enough um, to make that announcement. Part, no, to up the Rhino quality. Mm. Spyderco mm -hmm. is becoming known as a more and more of an echelon company. The Tenacious is losing weight because PM2s are becoming more affordable. Yeah. Um, why come out with another hundred dollar knife when we can set ourselves apart as a premium company and come out with a more premium product? Well, and again, to the marketing plays of like the Techno last weekend, we were talking about. Mm -hmm. I think this is, was a marketing play on why they made this going with more well known design and pushing their work as opposed to, yeah. right, like the, the in-house tenacious, if and, that makes yeah. sense. And I wonder if Reinhold um, had a say in, like, no, I don't like those, you're not putting my name Maybe. on it. Maybe. I would hope so. That yeah. thought came up with yeah. the original BD1 versions, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, as he just mentioned, the original was in BD1, uh, the current production is in CTS XHP, mm -hmm. which is a very nice steal comparable to S35 VN from what a lot of people are reporting online. That's what they say. <laughs> that that fancy new Chinese wonder steel that's on the market. <laughs> that S35. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm super happy with XHP. Yeah. So what are your guys' positive thoughts on these ones? Or in, on this guy? <clears throat> it's easily carried definitely uh yeah. when it's compacted it's it takes up almost no footprint whatsoever unlike some other knives which are <laughs> kind yeah. of wide but you're silly. you can slide into your like watch pocket it's yeah. nice yeah. and I, i've actually thought that this might be a nice knife to carry without the pocket clip specifically because of that it's yeah. not it doesn't yeah. seem like it's prone uh, to falling open accidentally the detent's good in the right hand um left hand i mean this little uh, well, we'll talk about that later, <laughs> but it, it feels somewhat secure in your hand for such a small knife. It does. I like the blade profile. It's um, You don't see too many Persian blades at that size. Uh, I personally um, 
and I don't know if you all agree with it, but surprising on the ergonomics with that cutout, a lot of people were thinking that that one cutout was going to dig in quite a bit right there. And mm -hmm. if you do get your first and your second finger locked in there, I, I was quite surprised about how like all of mm -hmm. us kind of said, Hey, that's not as bad as we thought it was going to be. Yeah. yeah it's not actually uncomfortable. It's not the spot that I get hotspots. No, yeah. yeah, no, not where the liner lock should be as, as we were all talking about, yeah. but yeah. Um, so the ergonomics for me is, I was really happy with yeah. such yeah. a small knife on how good of ergonomics it's, you actually got. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty solid. It's comfortable in a variety of grips too. Like it's not mm -hmm. unwieldy. One, one of the things I really like too is the fact that we've talked about in the past with other knives and they're kind of pushing just a little bit past that like these legal limits, like a two and a half or a three or a three and a half inch blade. Yep. So the fact that this one is like, okay, no, I am 2.35 inch. You're guaranteed it's under the legal limit. You're not going to be worried in like where that limit is in place. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can confidently carry this without being worried about being there is so a slightly couple, over the line or there something. There is a right? couple places that have a two inch, that very restrictive places that yeah. even this, but really they just want you to carry a keychain Swiss Army knife. Yeah. And that's, and that's the end of it. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Um, the fact that you can carry this in a lot of places is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I kind of like the fun little Persian -y and it, a lot of people complain that they don't like Persian blade shapes, but that's uh, a strong personal preference, I think. I'm actually down mm -hmm. on the Persian blade shapes. I think they're good depending on the design. That's, right? It all comes down to design. This isn't so severe that I find it's um, hard. It would be hard to cut things with, specifically because of the way the blade kind of cants down. Like the overall orientation is going yeah, the one way. Still fairly on center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're going to go down into something, okay. into the into table, it, in, almost into the table, <laughs> you're buying the next map. That's all uh, I'm saying. Fair enough. Like, fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, going in and through something, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Um, you, yeah, you can switch the pocket clip from one side to the other. Ambidextrous. They thought of us, even though it's a compression lock, and we'll get into that later. But they yep. did actually give us a left-handed pocket clip, which Spyderco, I've al almost come to expect that yeah. this yeah. day and age, right? Yeah. Like it's. I will just say briefly. They said that. Or some people have said that it's difficult to uh, for left handers to open, but I mean, I'm not left handed and that's super easy to flick open. Any last thoughts about the uh, the nice features for this knife? Um, yeah, like as Dennis was saying, the ergos are surprisingly comfy for the little guy. It is a little squishy, but for how small it is, that's kind of to be expected. Yeah. How is it for, for opening for you in the left hand? I just flick it, finger flick it. Yeah. I find. I miss that with this knife. Yep. Um, yeah, I wish that I could do it. Being right-handed and having that little <laughs> tap in, it feels good when you're holding it, but man, opening it... You, like, eh, no. Nope. <laughs> nope. It doesn't help with it being so small. Like, it really makes you fight with it, and then you can't get to the hole. <laughs> Just bypass that. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's going to be left in. <laughs> that totally is going to be left in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, any last positives for anyone else? I like it, and price point's not too bad. I think it's like 135 American or something like that. Like it's mm -hmm. quite a bit pricier for how small it is, but precision, like chamfering on the G10, uh, XHP, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's done well. So I think it justifies the price point on this one. Yeah. Small final note, I think, uh, for me, uh, and it's just because I'm thinking about it now. There's not all that much exposed. With the pocket clip, thanks to its position, a uh, deep carry wire clip would have been nice. But mm -hmm. with small knives, and small knives in particular, I really appreciate having most of it in the pocket as opposed to having a lower set clip, just because of the size. There's, yeah. there's not that much in the pocket to keep it in the pocket. Yeah, the mm -hmm. weight. So I, even though there's a lanyard <laughs> hole there, kind of whatever, it's not really obscuring anything too badly. So, yeah, yeah. So I guess we're jumping into the negatives. Yeah. And go. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, we all have the same complaint. Yeah, uh, first major one for me is G10 peel ply carbon fiber. Yeah, just yeah. the carbon fiber. Yeah. 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 I know it's an attempt <laughs> to keep the price down, but it just comes off as being cheap. Mm -hmm. And coming from somebody who has knives with that particular, I know you've got the GB1 as well. Uh, it's the peel ply. Both of them are peel ply, yeah, right? Yeah, G10 one side and almost not even as carbon fiber. It's but Spydeco does do carbon fiber too. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like my PPT yeah. is beautiful carbon fiber. Yeah. They charge a hell of a lot of more yes. premium than other companies do. 
mm -hmm. for carbon fiber. That's for sure. I wonder if they make their own. I never really looked into it. Yeah, don't know. No idea. I mean, maybe that's part of factoring in the price, but so for the price point, I get, I get it, but I I would prefer to have it in regular. Yeah. Proper G ten. Yeah. Or, uh, I will arm. say with the knife this small being that you have to put a little more force in to flick it, I do like the texturing mm -hmm. that the open G10 ha or open carbon fiber has rather than the polished carbon yep. fiber. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't mind the texture of the, the little bit of carbon fiber that's there, but I yep. just want yep. it to all be carbon fiber. Rather than mm -hmm. the other carbon fiber options that we own that are nice and smooth and polished mm -hmm. and whatever type of thing, right? So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, Mine is just a biased complaint on compression locks for lefties. Yep. It's an awkward knife again for, for They went the through the effort of making it ambidextrous in the clip. and then So it's done. a redundant comment that uh, we have over and over again because two of us <laughs> sitting here are lefties. But uh, uh, compression locks are not lefty friendly no matter how much <laughs> Nick Shabazz says they are. Like, but, hashtag not a smart man. Not a smart <laughs> man. Jesus. But I mean, you've got... Paul and I agreeing with you guys here. Like, yeah. it, it's, yeah. a, I think a for compression lock was kind of a poor choice for this design, especially with that little extra bit. Yeah, it would have taken a line mm -hmm. so nice. I think that leads us into the third little nitpick that we've got is the cutout on the knife in particular. Um, it it's a cutout that a lot of people are kind of questioning, and for ergonomics, it actually works really well with your your index finger curling around it. Um, but it's a really, it's a reach-in go-to spot for a liner lock that should be there that's not. Well, we've had issues where people have reached for that spot to try and close it, right? So I did that to myself the first time I picked up that knife. I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, I just played with the compression I've lock. I've had customers do it. And yeah. I know there is left-handed liners out there as well, but I think a right-handed liner is much more accepting in our world than a right-handed compression lock. As far for as sure. being a lefty guy. Well, it's very much so. It'd be so much easier to close for you guys. Like, yeah. You know, so much easier to close for me. Like, I have to do this weird talon thing to even get it started, whereas just, like, a simple press with your thumb would mm -hmm. be great. Um, does anyone dislike the trailing point rhino Persian-y thing? Um, like, it's... I like I, the, I'm okay with it. Yeah, yeah, I like the uniqueness of it, and it works as an overall design. Personal preference, not overly, no. But as the design and all that within the blade, it works. Yeah. It's not my first choice for blade shapes, usually. But I do like a well, like done one. You know what I mean? I've owned a Benchmade Bedlam for a long time. I like Persian <laughs> blades. Yeah. yeah. Um, personally, I think this works very well in the fact that the handle kind of comes uh, like downwards to one angle, and the blade kind of goes downwards to another. It makes, like I was saying earlier, it kind of makes uh, using it a little bit easier. Um, and it makes it look that much more like a rhino. Yeah. yeah, it really does. Like, you threw legs on that, it would be a rhinoceros. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. An animal-shaped knife that actually feels comfortable in the hands. Who would have thunk it? That's Amazing. it. Um, I, I personally like straighter blades than this. Um, that's just, again, personal preference. But I think it's a cool-looking knife, and I can't see any reason why it wouldn't be a good utility knife. Well, mm. part of the thing in the comments is they're talking about maximizing your edge in the smallest package possible. So yeah. even though it is only a two and just under two and a half inch blade, your cutting surface is almost equal to that of a Delica or whatever because mm -hmm. of the, because the of flat, yeah, yeah. yeah, the curl that you get. So you get more bang for your buck when it comes to the cutting surface itself, right? So yep, that's a fair uh, fair point. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there are definite benefits to that style of blade, for sure. Mm -hmm. I guess having a small knife with a delicate tip is kind of nice, you know, for yeah. very small little little tasks. Do you think this is genuinely enough that you could get away with carrying it, like, in an office? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I yeah, think it's small. Even with the, the Persian yeah. blade? Oh, yeah, because yeah. it's still small enough that if you're just pinch gripping it, you can you be can discreet blade, with it. Yeah. yeah, and it's a cute little thing. It's not a scary looking knife. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's a rhinoceros. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, even just the way it portrays itself, even compared to like a small M16 from yeah. CRKT, that it's looks, a small knife, yeah. but it still looks like a tactical knife, even though it's still. And aggressive. But yeah, yeah. yeah, it reads yeah. like a weapon. This doesn't mm -hmm. really yeah it's kind of weird looking but it's, yes. it doesn't really <laughs> scream weapon to me not really um one of the things i heard on another reviewer he was talking about the drop shutty action and being that it is as light as it is such a small blade yeah such a light blade. um but he commented on the fact that 
when Taiwan does a compression lock compared to when Golden Colorado does a compression lock. Yeah. And saying consistently the Golden Colorado stuff seems to drop shut a little smoother out of the package without maintenance. They've been doing it a that. long time with the paramilitary and stuff yeah. like that, right? So it's not surprising. So, and I actually played with several of both models. I actually have a tendency to agree with them that the PM2s and the PM3s are dialed in mm -hmm. pretty yeah, close, man. straight out of the box, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Part of that may just be due to the lightweight blade, at least in this case. Yeah. There's not really a lot of weight to help this, like, shake down into position. The reviewer I was watching had a little native that he could squeeze and it would drop close no mm -hmm. problem. Interesting. So, and blade the, shape was very comparable. And that's funny because the ones that I've handled have not been that way. No, but he says he tried to dial in. both of them in and the Golden Colorado oh, okay. one was much easier okay. to dial in to get to do it okay. than the Taiwan offerings. Fair so, enough. Yeah, I'll believe it. Fair enough. So I have a complaint that nobody else has brought up yet. Yep. Um, it has to do with the, the oh, spoon yeah. clip. Yeah, yeah. It is a little bit big, in my opinion. It's not my favorite thing when small knives have full-size clips on them. Like, I like the bug out, the miniature clip, and things like that, you yeah. know what I mean? And I feel like that exact clip mm -hmm. on that knife would have mm -hmm. fit so nice. Mm -hmm. I, Wouldn't be overpowering in any way and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. I and wholeheartedly it, agree. The, <laughs> the Dragonfly wire clip is exactly the size and the clip that should have been on this knife. Yeah. yeah. I find that uh, <clears throat> with this knife, when I was really like holding it in my hand, trying to like get a good grip on it, the clip on for a righty was just digging into me like crazy. Yeah. I feel like there's enough give in these spring clips or in the uh, the wire clips well, that you could. There's space for the meat of your hand to go in between. Right? That's like it, right? So there's there's not, some, not as harsh. Yeah. I'll like that. I, I, yeah. defi I definitely agree. Yeah, that's, that's a fair point, for sure, yeah. Wire clip would have been welcome. I think, honestly, when it comes to negatives on this knife, that's my biggest negative out of everything, is they should have put that wire clip on there, and I think that they they botched that one mm -hmm. yeah. on making such an awesome knife. And so many other awesome knives in Spider Co.'s collection that have wire clips, that, that should have been in yeah. that. Yeah. Like, I mean, when you think it, take into account the fact that the Sleesh Bowie has a wire clip, there's no reason why you can't have a high-end knife with a clip on it yep. like that. Yeah, exactly. The Techno 2. Yeah. 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 Okay, now that really weirds me out. The more, <laughs> the more we talk about that. Huh. Fair enough. And thus Joe does not sleep tonight. Troubling. <laughs> <laughs> He's starting the forums with Eric. He's like, why? Why, why? why would you do this? Wire? You son of a bitch. Is it because of the carbon fiber? Is carbon fiber hard to make a wire clip on? Because the small cap one? It's going to be the exact same problem mm. with the, oh. uh, the ZT22. Uh, the new little guy? The yeah. new little guy. It's got a long ass clip on yep. it. Yep. It sure does. I have a shorter clip at home that I might actually like. Uh, there was brought up that this isn't a traditional Spyderco clip. It's a standard three hole, which actually fits Benchmade's. And a guy put a Benchmade bug out clip on it, and it actually looked nice. pretty nice. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, no shit. Sure. That sounds kind of cool. Since when do they use the same hole arrangement? They don't. So, yeah, with going over the positives and negatives there, it's time for the grading system. So who wants to go first? Paul wasn't here. Let's make him go first. Last Sucker. <laughs> um, so, I think it can be summed up in exactly the fact that I have a Dragonfly in my pocket right now and I don't have this. They were both available to me and I went the, the Dragonfly route. I do like this knife, um, but it's something I'm going to like from afar, ultimately. It's something yeah. that I'm going to... It's something that I will enjoy when other people pull out of their pocket and stuff like that, but it's probably not something I'm going to put in my own collection. Mm-hmm. So what's your grading system? Um, a ranking. If you had to give it a letter grade. If I had to give it a letter grade, because of all the things we talked about, probably like a C, C minus. Yep. There was a number of things that we talked about that we didn't like. Mm -hmm. It's probably right. lean more actually farther towards like C minus. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, me personally, I, as a right-handed person, I would rank this closer to a B minus. Uh, somebody who cares for left-handed individuals, <laughs> um, maybe I'm a little bit closer to a C plus C. Um, it's just to the point where they give you left-handed side pocket yeah. clip, 
and you give them a compression lock that requires you to do this BS yep. in order to close it. Like, yeah, the opening's there, but man, that's awkward. Uh, it's funny how little people talk about a compression lock for lefties, and it seems like something that's just constantly skimmed over that it is mm -hmm. super obnoxious for us to deal with sure compared to is. other locking mechanisms on the market. As a righty, go out right now, pick up a compression lock, and try and close it with your left hand. It's and so you will awkward. understand immediately when you're holding <laughs> you will throw nothing your of the knife. Yeah. <laughs> like, look at where I have to pinch this. this and people stupid. keep talking about the thumb hole placement when they're opening and closing a knife, and they're like, oh, this is more important for lefty opening. And they're like, wait, this is the most annoying it's thing so as annoying. far as a lefty. Because goes. again, you can middle finger flick this all day, it works. Yep. And again, that's kind of why I'm giving that rating B minus, C plus, mm -hmm. but. Honestly, let's call it a C. Maybe, thinking about lefties. Maybe they'll do what they did with a couple of their other designs where they come out with a different lock system for it and kind of change it up. I'd like, like yeah, the Native has a lock back and a compression. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It up that way. Give it a line. The Manics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Manix, but I'm, I was even thinking of what's the... Uh, sage. The Sage, yeah. That's mm -hmm. come through oh, with like five different variants. That's what the Sage was made for. The Sage series was made to highlight enough, locking yep. mechanisms. Like yeah. specifically. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. I think it's unlikely we'll see another iteration of lock for this. I, 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 for this I completely I agree, yep. but a liner would definitely increase my uh, my vote. Yeah. Yep. If you're staunchly right-handed, there's no reason to not get this knife. But I think for the... Yeah, for, the, for all the reasons we talked about. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to weigh really heavily on the personal on this as well, besides all the points that we picked, pointed out with the choil and the compression for the lefty and stuff, but the personal, it just really, really doesn't do anything for me. I'm like C minus D on this guy. Fair enough. Like it's nicely made, it's a well put together package, yes it is comfy in hand, but it, I just don't like it. <laughs> It's not my first choice. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's how many how many of us have all their small knives, right? That like would we, we would choose those knives over this every time. Yep. I actually am going to give it a B plus. Last but not least, I'm mm -hmm. going to give it a high ranking because um, personally, it is actually my style. It's mm -hmm. it's something that I wanted to like. I don't know if I'll own one myself personally. Because of the clip, I'm kind of disappointed they put, didn't put a wire clip on it, and compression isn't my favorite thing in the world. I was wondering if this was going to be my first compression lock knife, and I don't think it actually is going to be, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. just because it is still annoying to close, as far as a lefty goes, compared to so many other things on the market for a similar price point that I can get, or pay an extra 20 40 bucks and be super happy with yeah. an ambidextrous lock. But as far as the design, the price point, my personal styling on it, yeah, I, I dig it a lot. I want to dig this knife, but it's got a, a few too many hang-ups for what you're looking yep. for. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think a B plus. I think they did a really good job. <laughs> I, I'm glad they recalled it and came out with this instead of an economy yeah. version. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was all, definitely the right All thing. the power plays to make this knife. I'm, I'm happy Spyderco did what they Use did. Use Tai Chung as much as possible. Like yeah. Everything mm -hmm. that comes out of there is good well made and i think if i was a righty i think i probably would put this into an a category and i probably would have it in my own collection and just because i'm a lefty is the only reason i can say i wouldn't right that's right so i just i personally find it obnoxious that they give you those holes <laughs> and it's it is a little bit. it's for righties some, to carry in their back pocket it just seems like a some people can thing. get over a compression lock as a lefty and i'm sure i'd love to hear in the comments if you are a lefty and you still like right-handed compression locks or i'd like to hear even more how much you hate them as a lefty because indeed jump on the bandwagon yeah, yeah. <laughs> 10 percent i'll burn, I'll burn <laughs> that bandwagon down yeah we're losing followers just talking about lefties too much but <laughs> hey, if they're fifty percent of the time, if they're going to halfway acknowledge them and then not do the courtesy of finishing the job. I mean, yeah. come on, that's just bad design. Yeah, it's yeah. They need to come up with a knife that's both a compression lock and a liner lock. Ugh. Yeah, that's too yeah. close to a CRKT auto locks. I want no part of that. <laughs> CRKT wants no. It part would of work. That. You would just need two tabs that moved at the same time, and you could push yep. either one of them. And it that's would, what I'm suggesting. But it would have one to be like a four, four, five, six, or a three fifty mm -hmm. thickness, so it would be wide enough to have both bars <sighs> on it. But it wouldn't actually be. That's it. There's no easy way no. to make it work. Where's the Hawk Brothers? No, I think yeah. that would just be gross. Oh, it would be, it would be disgusting. <laughs> oh yeah, no doubt. It's just a like thought puzzle of how to do it. Fair enough. You know what? Just bring out this scale, like this one, make it a button lock. 
or back lock. You and your button locks. I mean, <laughs> no, but for the compression, might as well. Yeah, him and his button locks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, back lock. I said don't worry back. No, Scott Cordy does back lock. Back locks are crap on this knife too. What are you talking about? This needs to be a lighter lock. <laughs> Only right way. Ideally, to do it. yes. <laughs> I wouldn't hate a button lock in the style of what's that small little Nakamura? Oh, Megumi. S- yeah, yes. the little slip jointy one. Not slip jointy, but like button the lock one. <laughs> the really. T- <laughs> I was thinking like old timey more style. Yeah, but I get, I get it. Where it's like a compression lock, but it's a button lock. Both. Yeah. The smock. Two, two things yeah, I want. So the smock. <laughs> yeah, they already have that technology. What the shit, guys? <laughs> So if they had a smock this, yeah, I'd be down on a smock Shit, up rhino. Actually, yeah, that'd be cool. Right? That'd be Can great. we mod this? Anyway. No, anyway. no. It's not yours. This video was over <laughs> five <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That, that was a fun little tangent, though, so it was good. It was good. <laughs> but I think we've kind of run it out, so we may as well cap it off there for now. So we will see you all again next week, everybody. Um... Oh, before we do that, I'm going to say thank you to The Cutting Edge once again yes. for supplying this knife to us for our reviewing pleasure. Forever. Yeah. And, and as far as the details goes, we didn't Q&A or QC or whatever that is mm-hmm. this, this some bitch, but yeah, she's pretty centered from Taiwan. Uh, grind slightly off on the tip, but it is a Persian, so you got to have some skill to do a Persian grind. Yep. Overall, yeah. Yep. Nice quality for sure. So The quality's there. Definitely. Oh, yes. Yep. But yeah. Cutting edge, let us play with this guy. Indeed, thank, thank you much, you. Lee, for that. And yeah, uh, that all being said, make sure you thank, comment, subscribe, and share, and help us grow the channel, because we like entertaining you guys, and hopefully you like us entertaining you. Uh, this is Nigel the Smith, signing off. Uh, I am who I am. I'm Dennis Vipers. I am the Iron Joe. And I'm XL.ca. We will catch you again next week. Don't need bigger knife. Bigger knife. Yeah.